In a panic, we're in over our heads again. We know this is what we're meant to do. So we wake up, put our feet on the floor, go and conquer the day like a warrior, like warriors. Cause that's what a trap does. We got your back so you can relax and focus on all the important stuff like getting your business done. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Coffee Shop Conversation Show. Everyone is having a fabulous Monday. Uh, as always, I am James Brown, your host from James Brown Voice, your voiceover with soul. And I'm joined by Miss Sandra Ray. Uh, hello, Sandra. How are you? I'm I'm okay. We're hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so good. Um, it's what we need is the enthusiasm, really. Yeah, uh, and... <laughs> I'm, 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 we're gonna make it through the show. I got all the things: <laughs> the cough drops, the tea, the the hot hot water, cold water, all the things. We're gonna make it through the we're, show. We're we're a mm. little a little bit uh, under the weather, possibly, but hopefully, yes, hopefully we'll have uh, we'll be able to make it through. Uh yes. well, interesting uh, and fundamental subject for us this evening. Uh it is drum roll customer experience. Customer experience and service fundamentals are crucial aspects of any successful business. Creating positive experiences for customers and providing excellent service are key factors in building customer loyalty, attracting new customers, and ultimately achieving business success. So that's our topic for the day. And uh, using that in our business to uh, to help get ourselves ahead. What do we think? Tribees and others do put some questions in the chat for us if you uh, if you have any. And uh, we can we're gonna let that. they're gonna let Nestine give us a little bit of an education on this topic. Absolutely. Go ahead, Nestine. Thank you so much, Sandra. I could see James was gonna skip right over me, but then you pushed me right in there. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> if if and... I don't know that you're going to be saying anything, I have to skip. But now that I know, you're very welcome to to say whatever you like, Misty. I can see you're very excited to hear I everything that I have to say, James. Very. Always. Awesome, guys. It's so amazing to be here with the most beautiful, incredible, amazing entrepreneurs from around the world. Right now, we have the US in the house. We have some South Africa in the house. We have some, do we have some, U yeah, we have some UK in the house. We basically have the whole globe in one meeting. So this is absolutely awesome. It's great to see you here. I'm not going to speak for too long. I know you're all sad about that. I won't speak for 60 minutes. But <laughs> what I am going to do is just give you my six rules. Because I was like, well, if I'm being invited to, you know, speak on the show and write a blog post about customer service, then I'm going to definitely come up with my own six rules that basically result in great customer service. So first of all, obviously, customer service, really, really important because why? Because if we don't have customers, we do not have a business. And that's problematic if what we're trying to do is be a business owner. 
So customer service, really, really important. Um, it's really sad to me. I see it all the time. Actually, I saw it yesterday in a pharmacy as well. Um, you know, you walk in and there's one pharmacist behind the counter. There's 18 people waiting. There's no manager on the floor. And I'm thinking the people, the, the person or the people that own this pharmacy, they probably don't even know. They don't know that I'm standing here literally like, pulling my hair out of my head because I need to wait for 80 minutes to just see a freaking pharmacist, right? That is what bad customer service looks like. Bad customer service leaves a bad taste in the customer's mouth. It, um, it can result in reputational damage, just like, like what I did right now. Luckily, I didn't say the pharmacy's name, right? But if I had said their name, all of you would be like, mental note, never go there. So... That's what happens. And I think it's really important that we all know this, but do we even know how to fix it? Do we even know what the rules are? Do And I think it would be worth having a conversation about it. So I'm going to give you my take on it. And then I'm very, very keen to hear your take on it as well. Because as experienced entrepreneurs, I know we all have our own rules. So I have my six rules and then I have three action steps for you. So my rule number one is, honor your commitments. I will literally ask Peter, throw a tantrum right there. If you tell me that you're going to do something and then you just do not do it. Do not do that. If you tell people that you're going to do something, if you commit to something, if you tell a customer they're going to get a coupon card, if you tell a customer we're going to have a call, if you tell a customer, you know, obviously, like every now and again, everyone's human. You're going to forget about that call. You're maybe going to forget one thing on the list, but try and make a habit out of actually just giving people what you promise them. Like that is the essential first step. You got to get that solid. And it can get trickier than we think as well, especially with big contracts. And I know, James, you could relate to this potentially because you also work with lots of corporate clients. And sometimes what it says in the contract and uh, what the product description is versus what the people actually want is two completely different things. So it could say, for example, in our corporate contract that we need to deliver an entrepreneurial course at an educational institution, which we're really good at doing. But if we know what the directors actually want, why do they want? They want feet through the door. They want marketing for their um, institution. So they need the results to be good. They need to be able to use case studies. That's going to fundamentally affect the way that we deliver this product, right? Because now if we know that, we're gonna spend a lot of time putting together really nice marketing material for them. We're gonna make sure everyone knows, we're gonna suggest, okay, this is a good time for the public to show up, like put it out there. We're gonna run it a little bit differently than if we thought they just wanted a really good educational experience. So that's step number one. And that also comes back to what we've been hammering on with regards to market research. So know what the customer wants. If you do not know, ask them. If you have not asked them, assume that you do not know. It's the safest bet, right? That's rule number one. So honor your commitments. Rule number two, set the stage for success. Now, this is a step that I always used to um, downplay a little bit in my head, but that when I met Peter, I actually realized how incredibly insanely important this is so have you ever been on a flight or a travel experience maybe gone on a boat or a cruise or a train and no one well if <laughs> if you live in South Africa this might have actually happened to you if you live overseas just imagine for a second what this would feel like so you get onto this experience, you're ready to travel somewhere, absolutely no one welcomes you, there's no one to explain to you that there's an emergency exit, no one tells you what's going to happen, someone starts pushing a trolley down the aisle, you don't know what's in there, you don't know should you stop it, should you like get out of the way, like are there snacks, no one said anything, <laughs> things are just happening, that is what's setting the stage is all about. Now, imagine you get onto your experience, your cruise or your flight or your whatever, 
there's someone at the door that welcomes you. Hi, this is your seat. Please go and take a seat here. Person is really nice. So what we're going to do next, ma'am, is we're going to push this trolley. There's the emergency exit. We're going to do an emergency landing. Whatever that is, whatever they tell you, it doesn't really matter. It's just like, wow, I, I know what's coming next. I kind of feel already a bit taken care of right? So that is setting the stage. It is necessary to tell your customer what you're going to do to them. Even if it's spelled <laughs> out on the funnel, even if it's spelled out on the website, even if it's in the contract, still communicate to them, make sure that they understand the process that we're going to go through. Even if you feel like, and you will, you will, a lot of the times, in, especially in my classes, because I teach my classes this way as well, my in-person classes and my online lectures um it makes a massive difference it makes an insane difference actually i i did an experiment and the one day i did a lecture and i followed the exact same process that i would normally um follow in that lecture so i showed a TED talk that was really inspirational i did a case study and i went through some of the uh, q and a's but what i didn't do and i did i didn't do this on purpose was i didn't tell them okay so what we're going to do today is we're going to watch a video because why because that brings an expert into our classroom she's going to explain this then next up we're going to do this and then we're going to end with this and this is how it all fits together i didn't do that and do you know my evaluation dropped by 25%? I am not even lying. I legit did this. Can you believe it? And I still, I did the lecture exactly the same way I would always do it. And I normally get like fairly high scores. <laughs> so this drop in 25% was really like... It was like, wow. And it was just because I didn't tell them what we're going to do when. So that is what setting the stage is about. So think about the process that your customer goes through. Spend some thoughts on it. And if you're not sure what you might not be telling them, put a mock, mock customer through the process and ask them, was anything unexpected? Did you feel like there should have been any more explanations anywhere? Did I cover everything up front? Were you prepared? You know, did you feel taken care of? And then they will point it out to you. So that's rule number one. Always, always, always set the stage. That was number two. Two. We are two. I should talk faster. You should talk okay. faster. <laughs> Cultivate genuine empathy. Genuine empathy, very important. Your, your customers need to feel like you actually care about them. There's none of us that walk into a store and we're like, thank goodness. I'm just a number. I'm so happy. No one even wants to know my name. This is fantastic. There's no way that that is happening right? It's even if you're just dashing to the grocery store and you really hope no one sees you, if the cashier smiles to you, you're going to be happy versus if they just completely ignore you and make you feel like you don't exist, you're not going to be that happy. So always cultivate genuine empathy, put yourself in the shoes of the customers and show interest. Rule number four, faster, transparent communication. So that goes a little bit with setting the stage, but it's about making sure that you're always transparent and honest about the process and you have those open lines of communication in place. And especially, this is especially important for your customer. They need to know if something goes wrong, who do I contact? If I have a question, what do I do? Do I send a WhatsApp? Do I do an email? Do I do smoke signals? What is it going to be? Like, it's important for them to know how to communicate with you. And it's important for you because you don't want to be checking your emails and LinkedIn and Facebook and TikTok. You want to know that the communication is going to come through a certain channel and that's hopefully going to be it. Then you can also better manage it. Um, continuously seek feedback and improvement. So that's rule number five. Always make sure, like we said with the market research, put mock customers through your process and ask them, how was my customer service? Service. What do you think about my process? Is there anything where I could improve? So obviously you want to do that for the product quality, but you don't want to forget to ask them about the actual experience, the service, the process, everything that surrounds the actual product. So, Because sometimes, especially if we're really good at what we do, we get so into creating the perfect product, delivering the perfect service, doing the best accounting work ever, making the beautiful financial statements that we forget wait a minute, the process, the experience, the communication, all those other things actually matter too. 
Um, and then rule number six, and this is one of my absolute favorites. So Nistine of when I started my first business 10 years ago would not have said, she would have said, this is awful. This should never be a rule. So the Nistine back then believed that you should never mix business and pleasure. But my rule number six is always mix business and pleasure. No one wants to feel, not that much, James. <laughs> <laughs> but where is your mind going my mind's not going where you I think it's going I pro- yours, it's not like, I, I it's promise like... you it isn't I pro- <laughs> this is like way far away from what you're thinking you're thinking um always mix business and pleasure now james has got me blushing thank you james <laughs> <laughs> you got yourself blushing lady <laughs> um Make sure that your customer knows that you're a human and they're a human and you actually have built a relationship with them. If you build a relationship with your actual customer, especially the people that make the actual decisions about your product, you are going to save yourself so much blood, sweat and tears. And time. You're going to cultivate loyalty. You're going to make them feel like they're not just a number to you. To you. And you're going to have a a fantastic time doing what you do best because it'll be about the actual person. It'll be about the relationship. It'll be not just, if they wanted to just get something from a website, they would have. They wanted to get it from ChatGPT. I promise you they would have done it. They would not have called you. But they reached out to you because you're an actual human being. So embrace that process. So those are my six rules. You can check them out in the blog post. I think they're fantastic because I wrote them. <laughs> but please <laughs> check them out. Give me your feedback. I want to hear your rules. I want to um, see you implement them and give me some feedback. I'm going to end with three quick action steps, right? So what, those are the rules. But how do we now actually take action? Because it's important to me that whenever you listen to me, that you walk away with, this is what I'm going to do. Step one, map out your customer journey. If you don't, if you haven't physically drawn out your customer journey, I don't care how you do it. You can paint it. You can flow chart it. You can do it in pastels. Like you can paint it on the wall. Finger paint. Anything. But you need to actually at least once map out what is the experience that a customer actually goes through? What are the touch points? Where do things happen? They get this email, then they talk to that person, then they do this booking. Map it out physically. Step two, implement the essentials. So that's where you go to the rules and you go and check. Okay, I now have my customer journey down. Am I actually meeting these rules and if you have your own rules for what you think great customer service is are you even implementing your own rules like in your customer journey do the things that you want to come out in terms of great customer service is it coming out in your actual journey that's step two and then step three is just once you've got that down so you've got the essentials then you can literally play with it you can seek areas for enhancement and that's also where what you want to do is contact some more customers if you're in the tribe it's really easy you can literally ask any of our beautiful humans to help you out and pretend to be one of your customers and just help check out the customer journey and what happens is they learn you learn everyone learns relationships get spilled it's just a beautiful thing so that's step number three and that is everything i have to say today thank you so much Sandra and James. I want to hear you guys. I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear your rules. I want to hear how you guys are feeling, what you're thinking. I'm really, thank you very much, Nestine. It's very plenty of food for thought there uh, and uh, lots of different steps that we can look at to make sure that we're doing as much as we can. And certainly some things that, um, you know, uh, like mapping out the journey, especially that's something that I've never done. Um, you think about kind of you know what you want for your customers and what you want them to experience but um actually putting it committing that down to paper or you know wherever one does these days um that's that's awesome yeah thank you very much um who would like to kick us off on uh, this one today <laughs> obviously <laughs> peter can't keep quiet he has to speak if i've spoken <laughs> peter hello oh uh, you know what these it may look simple. Um, 
sometimes it looks so simple that it seems irrelevant or irrelevant or the elephant in the room but the you have to tell them the punny joke they're not I'm, they're not going to get it no it doesn't that doesn't matter um but it looks so simple that people ignore it and they don't understand what damage it actually causes and because they are not following the simple steps it becomes a complicated situation where they just don't know what's going wrong and they can't seem to figure it out. Sometimes you just got to go back to the beginning and initiate the simple steps. And as you're initiating the simple steps, it'll very quickly be highlighted where in your process is it broken. But unless you actually do it, you're not going to see the results. So, and I, and I think that's the, that's the thing when it comes to things that are so simple. Um, it just gets ignored. I have a business, um, I get customers, but then do you keep customers? Do they come back? Um, if they're not coming back and you're permanently striving to get more customers, get more customers, and you permanently need more customers, then there's something wrong with your process. So go back to the basics, go back to the very beginning and figure out what is wrong with your process. Where is it broken? Why is it not working? And these steps, as you listen to the steps one to one was one to six, um as a rule six rules and three steps six rules three steps it's actually really simple and really basic but it's the, uh, but it's the thing that people miss the most and then they just don't understand why it's not working so implement it you'll see very quickly where it's going wrong why it's going wrong and if you think that you understand the customer's journey because and, and it's your business and you haven't had feedback from somebody else, I guarantee you that you don't. You don't know the customer's journey. You're guessing. Time for guessing is over. Implement those steps, and the, and the customers will tell you where it's broken and where their experience could be better. Um, at the end of the day, it's about customer retention, not about how many customers can I, how many people can I sell this product to. It's not about that. It's about retaining the clients that you have and the customers that you have so that it creates something that is consistent and continues. Otherwise, you're permanently doing marketing. Permanent marketing, permanent marketing. Why, why do I have to market permanently? Um, it's because you're not retaining your clients. So follow the simple steps and, and, and just see what happens. The best source of new business is current business. Yeah, yeah. That's Peter over and out. Can I tell them the book? No. <laughs> no one's going to know no. what an irrelevant is. <sighs> what do you call yes. an irrelevant elephant? What do you call it, Misty? An irrelevant. Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> you feel better, Misty? <laughs> so <much. laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yes, I agree, Peter. Um, if you're not willing to take the feedback. I think that's another key too. You have two ears, so you need to be able to take the feedback. I'm in a situation where the person does not want to take the feedback. Um, and it is what it is. Like I, like, okay, I gave the feedback. You choose not to take that. That's your choice. Um, yeah. So being willing to take the feedback, I think is really key. Really key. Mr. L, come on in. Hi, Sandra. Hi, everyone. Um, you know, I, I imagine you've worked so hard to build your business and uh, you know you get in there. Uh, sometimes here and there you're getting customers, but you can't retain them. Um, it, it can be disheartening um, a lot of times. So... If, if you are not planning on retaining your customers or satisfying your customers at least, um, then I think you don't have any business opening up a business or you don't have any business in business. I don't know how you say it. So I, I'm going to talk to a few points, but before I get to, uh, just two points, but before I get to the two points that uh, Nestine mentioned, there, there, is, there is a base, there is a background to all of these. And that is uh, what Explore Project is all about. Uh, it's um, coffee first and business later. So you build that base so that you understand your client. Uh, 
until you are able to sell or service them. Then because you've got um, all the um, the knowledge and uh, the research and all that that you've got about your client, it's it's going to be easy for you to service that client. And even when you're looking for feedback, it's going to be very easy for you to get it. Even when you, you, you're trying to get referrals, you'll be able to get referrals easily because you and the client, it's, it's not just a, uh, a supplier, customer kind of a relationship. Um, it's, it's, I think it gets promoted to a bit of a, uh, um, a friendship, kind of. So the point that I want to talk to is setting the stage for success. And that, I think, goes with your approach to your client. Um, if, if, if you don't go to your approach your client with uh, confidence, forget it. If you just say, well, I'm just going there, I'll see what happens, forget it. You'll not get the business because already your attitude is negative. You'll not get the client. You know, that's one point that I wanted to speak to. And then the, the next one, the second and last one is um, empathy for your client. I mean, I've got a client or I've got clients, and sometimes they go through hard times. I'm in advertising. They cannot pay their money for advertising. What do I do? Do I say to them, well... Sorry, you've been advertising with me for two years. Now you can't pay for this month. Bye-bye. Do you do that? You know, you, you, I think you need to try and keep your client in business because then you're getting business from them. You know, so for me, uh, your attitude when you're approaching your client as well as being empathetic to your client just speak to me as a person and they speak to me as an employee and as an employer. That's Lesecha Moko from Litchmock, your business development specialist. Thanks, Lesecha. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it, really? You want to try and help people as much as you can, uh, but also don't get yourself into trouble by taking too much on credit. Uh, that, that's something that you also have to be a bit wary of. You've got to think about yourself first. I really do think you have to, I'm afraid. We're not, unless, you know, you've got money coming out of your eyeballs. In which case, well done. Um, but yes, so we'll go back. Is it Peter or is it Nastine next? This is Peter. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to sh share an experience that I had recently. Um, I walked into a fast food establishment. Oh, and I won't say which one because it's not necessary. And they changed their process. They put a computer screen at the entrance and then you had to order from the computer screen. They removed the interaction between you, the customer, and the staff behind the counter. And I did not know. So I walked straight to the counter and I, I stood in a queue and I got to, and they were like, did you place your order at the at the machine? No, we can't help you. You have to go and place your order at the machine. And I was like, but I just stood in the queue. Can you not just take my order? They were like, no, we cannot. Um, so I was like, okay, well, then I'm just not going to buy food here. I'll just go somewhere else. Um, and that which is exactly what I did. I, I walked out. Um, I, I think I, I went somewhere else and I, got, and I got something completely different. And you moaned for like uh, an and hour. I, and I moaned for like an hour about it. When you came home. <laughs> and I will never go back there again. <laughs> I will just not go back there. Um, but here's the thing. If they had done their research, if they had actually... Um, thought about the customer's experience there is a certain interaction that a customer actually wants they they want to feel heard they want to feel seen they want to feel important um and that engagement is very important when they when they turn you into a number they're like we cannot help you because you didn't do this um you've just lost a customer just straight just like that um Another thing that I think is really important is if you have a process where your customer can communicate with you and they can tell you where they think you are going wrong and you make them feel like it is important for them to be heard, how do you think they feel? 
when you're giving them the actual platform to be heard within your space. Well, I can tell you now, if 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 somebody was asking me how how was your experience, it's really important to us that you tell us how you feel. How can we do better? For me personally, it would make me feel great. It would make me feel like they cared. They care about me. They care about how I feel and they care about my experience. So it's not just about creating a great experience. It's about including your customer in the experience, which I think is very important. Amen. It was literally an hour, an hour of listening to, can you believe they didn't even want to? <laughs> yeah, um, I have, yeah, my husband would have been the exact same way because he does not like that either. So ours is in the US, US it's the, the self-checkout. If I was going to um, be a cashier, then you need to pay me, you know, type thing. So yeah, um, I have the same grumble in my house, Nistine, so... <laughs> Um, for sure, for sure. Um, I know Susan said on the YouTube live, an informed customer is a happy customer. So I love to over communicate. Um, I was just telling um, a new client this morning, I said, I will over communicate. So just being honest, being real, especially the first couple of weeks as we establish routines and processes and stuff. Um, I'd rather you know, hey, more than you want to know <laughs> so that you understand where I'm coming from um, and usually a lot of times it's also my excitement too that I just like want to tell all the things you can ask Nistine I can talk really 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 want to talk um, but Hendrick I think uh, you definitely ha are going to have a perspective that the rest of us don't because you do physical pros pros products oh my goodness come on in the room um, thank you Sandra um <laughs> I think my views um, are going to echo almost every what everyone has said already, because um, at the end of the day, um, we do business. Actually, the principle for business remains the same. Respect your customers and your business will go far. I think um, with what um, Peter just said, it also brings to light the importance of training our people. Remember, when people walk on the streets or when people are at your workplace or at the place that you call your own, working for you, they represent you. So it serves no purpose you speaking with your customer in a respectful manner and then your employees treating your customers as if they don't matter at all. So it is very important to make sure that you are on par. You bring in people who respect your customers as much as you do. You bring in North, um, the fast food outlets where he buys things. And that could have been avoided had the people there been interested in what they are doing instead of just saving for the sake of getting um, paid at the end of the month. So that is very important as well as um, with regards to what Lise just said as well earlier on, with regards to being honest or loyal to your customers, you also need to have limits because um, you can only help to a certain degree. I mean, it does not help um, you or the business in you donating something that the business is going to need two or three days after you've donated. So it is very important to take all those into consideration. Um, that's Hendrik from Teresano F Movers, your lifting and rigging specialists in Bumalang. Thank you, Hendrik. And uh, finally, we've got, not finally, uh, now we have Krista coming in. Nice to see you, Krista. Give us your thoughts. Krista. Have to Hi. Yeah, so go. I'm a, a writer. Many of you know that I do ghost write, ghost written books, blog posts, that sort of thing. And I really appreciate in a virtual assistant what Sandra Ray was saying about over communicating in the beginning. I've learned the hard way 
that, I mean, I have this fear of like, oh, I'm going to micromanage. But in the beginning, it's really helpful to communicate a lot about what you want, what you're looking for, what you don't want, what the goal is. And I've learned the hard way on that, working with virtual assistants and other people who who help me, that it's actually okay in the beginning. And then also to kind of ask them for their input and their advice and, you know, look, this is the goal. What can we do together to reach this goal? I also wanted to add, uh, as a writer, I've noticed that a lot of customer service comes from experience, a lot of developing good customer service practices. And also, sometimes it's about changing the way people perceive my brand. I'll give you an example. I work with web designers, graphic designers, other types of people, because their focus is is web content and other content that the people read. What I realized was that the people who actually want to hire me and retain me are the people who are focused on building trust and not just, oh, let's get some search engine optimized keywords. They're actually interested in building trust, telling a story and sharing the knowledge behind the story so that they can make an impact. And they're interested maybe even a little in being inspired because I'm the the ghostwriter, blogger, and amateur skier who just happens to be blind. People find that story inspiring, how I use it to build trust. And this isn't a commercial for me, but this is just a, a pointing out that when you share, when you have a stronger brand, then your communication and your customer service can also be stronger because you make sure that you have people who are allied with your brand and not going to have conflicts about what the end goal is. I love that. I love that, Krista. Um, and I, I fully agree that customer service isn't just about your customers, but it's also about your staff. How you treat your staff and how you communicate with your staff is going to show in your customer service. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. I'm in the middle of a nightmare right now because of it. Um, yeah, it it really does show because if you don't have customer or if you don't have staff that communicate well, then it's going to be really hard to uh, have good customer service because there's a breakdown. It's a breakdown in your company. So if you're not um, communicating well with your staff or, or whatever the case can be, it's going to be really hard for you to give good customer service because yeah, things are going to get left and left behind. They're not done properly. Um, and then you have to figure out, is it you as a leader or is it the staff or is it a little bit of both and how to fix that? Um, again, I'm literally in the middle of that right now. Um, and yeah, it's been very, very interesting to um, try to decipher. And um, that's what I was saying about listening and being willing to take feedback as a business owner. So definitely think that's very key. Pramela, come on in. Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, your points are just excellent, Nastine. I really like your list, like your list, um, both lists. And I really believe in in being genuine, being who you are, because that's what your customers and your potential customers and the customers you have now will definitely um, connect with you as a human being rather than just as a business. So I totally understand what Peter was saying. Uh, that happened to me recently as well. Um, it's a fast food place uh, my husband loves, which uh, I won't name, but I don't go there very often. <laughs> and, and I was just shocked when I walked in for the first time and there was a machine <laughs> that I had to deal with. So um, the other thing, I the other point I wanted to, to make was um, oftentimes we can ask we can ask our peers for feedback um, as well as um, as our customers, ask them for feedback, that's, that's brilliant. Um, and I have an advisory board with the Healing Institute, so I ask for their feedback. And I'll give you an example. So just recently I did a video um, of, I just did it on, um, on Zoom and I was just recording it 
as a practice because I need to, I, I want to put a video on, on the front page of our website, helping people navigate through the website because it's not complicated, but if you don't scroll down, you won't know that there's other portions to the website. So I did the video and I sent it out to all of my team, all of my practitioners and my advisory board. And I also have another group of women, one of two of which are practitioners, but there's two or three other people that aren't. Um, but I want I really value their information or I really value their opinion. So I really um, that's one of the reasons that I sent it to them as well and got amazing feedback as to how this video was, um, how, they, how they acknowledged what I was saying, some of the points that they liked, what they you know thought I could improve on. Um, so yeah, sometimes you need to um, expand who you're asking your feedback of, which um, is very, very, very valuable. Yes. Pramilia Parm, Healing Institute. Uh, coming all the way from the west coast of Canada, still drinking my morning coffee. Oops, you can't see that. Still drinking my morning coffee because it's the coffee shop show. Um, and the Healing Institute is a virtual global hub of holistic practitioners. We are out to heal the world. It's a big job, but we're going to do it. And um, I just have to let you know, I have that the music that you play at the beginning of this show. It's in my ear for the rest of the week. Not, I'm not complaining. I love, the, I love that music. So, <laughs> I'm going up to the the city where I think the couple that created the music. They're from Edmonton, Alberta. I'm going there at the end of the month because my son lives there. So I need to get in touch with them and say hello. Yeah, that's me. It's a good tune, isn't it? One that does sort of yeah stay there for a while. <laughs> Thanks, Familia. Uh, who is it now? Is it Peter again? It is Peter again. Thanks, Peter. Tell it's me. a pleasure, James. Um, I actually wanted to touch on something that Hendrik mentioned. Um, uh, I think it's extremely vital that we as solo entrepreneurs need to understand that the customer experience is it's on us. You know, it's only us in the business and the way that we interact with our customers will dictate whether or not we retain them. But when you have staff, what you need to understand as a business owner is that you don't build your business. Your staff do. Um, if you are not investing in your staff, you are not investing in your business. Period. If you have customers that arrive to maybe a, a, an office or a front desk and you've got no trained staff, your customers are going to leave confused. Nine times out of ten, they're not going to get what they need. They're not going to leave with their problem solved. They're not going to leave with a product. Um, invest time in training your staff. And when I say training, I don't just mean train them to do the job. Train them on the values of the space because this is how we interact with customers. This is how we regard them. This is how we make them feel. This is so there's there's a lot of training that needs to take place. But here's the great thing: when you invest time in training your staff, your staff feel like they are important to the process. Well-trained staff equal staff that deliver because they are part of the business. So if you think I'm just going to hire 20 people and my business is going to grow, the answer is no, it's not. Um, you're going to end up spending salaries on people and then you're not going to get frustrated because nobody's giving me what I need. And the feel that happens when a customer walks in is not the feeling or the experience that I want them to have. Well, that's on you because you haven't trained your staff. When you do create a space where your staff are being trained, it's not just training one, two, three. It's relationship building. It's etiquette training. It's manners. It's you, you name it, but invest into the staff because they represent you. And, and that's something that really important that Hendrik actually mentioned that I thought was absolutely brilliant. Um, 
if you invest in your staff, they will invest right back into you. Sometimes. Invest in them the right way and it will come back to you. It'll come back to you tenfold. But don't do it and then keep struggling. Keep on struggling. Over and out. Yeah, I agree, Peter. Um, unfortunately, in the U.S., there was a, well, I still think it's a struggle for, for employers to keep their employees um, because with COVID and stuff, there was just such a down of employees. Anyways, and I um, worked in a circle of, of small businesses and they said that was the highest, the hardest thing was to get employees that were willing to work and wanted to be invested in the company. And that that was just a really big struggle. Um, and, you know, people were raising their, you know, rate to pay and all that stuff. But if you didn't train your employees, then that was going to be a hard thing to do. So I know that the culture in the U.S. has had to change a lot about how they've dealt with that because um, employee retention was extremely rough in the last year or two since coming out of COVID. So that is definitely true. You got to train your staff. They are the face of your business usually. Um, and if not, they're, they're doing things that are going to affect your business. So whether that's they're doing graphics or they're they're managing your email box or whatever. So yeah, super important to train your staff to um, do as well as you do. Mr. L, come on in. So um, the the just one thing that I want to uh, mention um, what what Peter said about staff training. I'm just looking at uh, taxis. Uh, a guy has got or has bought like. 20 taxis and he's got a whole lot of drivers driving for him and we all know how many accidents uh, taxis get involved in and all that and the other day I was just thinking if this guy s said to the taxi drivers these are yours you are responsible for service and payment of uh, installments what you need to do is give me this much a month that's it I think the whole thing would change and then he would, I mean, they would be sure that there are no accidents, they'll service the cars, they'll keep them clean and all that because they feel the ownership of the taxi. You know, just uh, one thing that I wanted to mention on what Peter said about training your staff. So yesterday I was in a, in a meeting where um, I was talking and other people were listening, sitting in pews and listening. Um, and what I what I was talking about was the six little stories. Uh, it's faith, trust, hope, confidence, love, and attitude. Um, they all have got their short little stories, and because of time, I'll not go into them. But um, coming back to us now, does your client have faith in you? Do they trust that you will solve their problem? Okay, when you approach them or when when they approach you for, for, for you to solve their problem, do they do they have high hopes that you will actually you will actually help them out? Do they have confidence in you in what you say you will do? Um do they love your product or your service or do they love you? Do you love them and all that? And the last one being attitude, the approach. When you approach them, when, when they approach you, how is the feedback? You know, if if they approach you and your attitude is negative, then you're not going to do business. If you approach them and you know you're not going to get business out of them, walk out. You know, that's just uh, something that I that I shared yesterday with those people where I was. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Lucia. Uh, and I think we've just got how much more? How many people we got time for? Do you think, Sandra? One or two? We can let Hendrik go. Yeah, Hendrik go. Yeah, yeah, I know we got time for Hendrik. So we have time for one more after that. But uh, Hendrik, take it away, Sam. Um. Okay, I'm just going to be short. Um. With regards to, this is just a thought that I had while um, Lesage was talking about also the taxi uh, taxi owners. But what if 
they are customer segment or let me put it in a different dimension what if their priority is not your safety what if these guys the taxi drivers actually do get training but what they are told is by any means necessary you need to give me this much at the end of the day i don't care how many people you um you threaten along the road i don't care how many people's cr cars you crash along the as long as you bring me this much so the question is is it um lack of training or is it an induction on how to do the wrong things very true hendrick yeah well, <laughs> mr hell said he'll have to have a whole discussion on that <laughs> at a later time <laughs> oh, i don't think we can get into that mr brown your final Sandra, oh go ahead Mr. Sandra, sorry just 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 a little thing i think when i said to hendrick we need a discussion on this it's so that we can we can learn from each other and to see you know it's not that i've got a solution it's just a thought that i had thank you you're welcome you're welcome mr brown your final thoughts and i'll go and then miss nestine has some announcements yeah um very interesting and i think something i think we've all um learned something here so again thank you very much to to everyone who participated and to especially to nestine for writing that uh, very interesting post which definitely bears some more analysis um because you're right we it's much easier to um to basically get to upsell or to uh, retain a client than it is to get a new client so we we absolutely 100 percent need to make sure that we're nurturing the clients that we have there are um there are best ways to keep making some making some money down the long term and maintaining those relationships um and also i think that we just need to it's just something that bears writing writing down as well which is something that i'm going to do with the customer journey so thank you for putting that into my head uh and uh sandra what is your business mr brown Oh yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? So <laughs> I'm James of James Brown Voice, your voiceover with soul. Come to me if you want something uh, impactful for your business to say and to associate it with a trustworthy and welcoming voice. It's very British, which of course you know you need. <laughs> I love it, love it, love it, Mr. Brown. Uh, yes, I think customer service is extremely important. Um, and... Yeah, I think Nestine's blog has on all many points. I'm actually in the middle of writing my customer journey as I am relaunching in two weeks. <laughs> so um, Gareth's going to keep me from losing my mind on that, thankfully. Um, but I want to say hey to Gareth and Susan on Facebook Live and Mr. L for hanging out with us and Nestine, of course. Um, and thank you susan for doing our um, show notes and um, graphics and also turning our youtube channel into a podcast on spotify so make sure you share like and sh yeah share like and subscribe <laughs> words today sorry um my name is sandra i'm the owner of get it done coaching and vas nope my name is Sandra. I'm the owner of Get It Done Coaching. And I am your goal accountability coach that helps you create not only your goals, but the action plan to get to your goals. Ms. Estine, you have announcements and then you can wrap us up. Thank you so much, Sandra and James and everybody. This has been amazing. Quick announcement because I know we have people that need to hop off. Um, exciting opportunity for our tribe humans. So if you have been um, getting involved in the Business Academy Cafe and watching this journey unfold, we have an opportunity for you. We want you to get involved in helping us launch this knowledge hub because that's what the business academy cafe is it's about knowledge products for entrepreneurs so the email is still going to go out as soon as i get a moment to write it but basically if you have resources knowledge products i'm talking ebooks mini ebooks flyers infographics courses whatever you have that you want to either um, give away as a lead magnet or that you want to push out there as a paid offer 
you have to get in touch with us. We're currently building out those collective offers. It's going to be supported by and put together by the tribe. So we're going to be prioritizing the calls going out to everyone, but we're all obviously going to be prioritizing our Explore Protect tribe members. So if you're in that position and you want your business to get seen and you want your products to get sold, this is part of the process of making that happen. So any knowledge product you have, anything, infographic, ebook, flyer, whatever it is, get it to us. You can email WhatsApp if you have more, uh, if you need more information, but get it to us and we'll include it for you uh, in the Business Academy Cafe offer. So, but the email will go out, but I just wanted to announce it live on the show as well. So that's super exciting. I just also wanted to quickly say, mm -hmm. wow, what amazing tribe members do we have? We have Permelia that's on a mission to heal the world. We have Krista, who is a blind skier, bringing inspiration to the whole world with her words. We have James, that's literally the soul of voiceover in the house. We have Lisecha bringing light to the whole world. Sandra's helping and, us get everything done. And Hendrik is moving the world. And Hendrik is literally creating employment in a country that needs it most. Like he's literally solving South Africa's unemployment problem by himself. <laughs> so, <laughs> well done, Hendrik. Well done, everybody. Well done, Gareth and Susan. You guys are also absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for supporting the show. And we'll wrap it up here. So may all your wildest entrepreneurial dreams come true. Get in touch and... Let's get on to the Forbes 500 list.